A lot of the times, older people, they just want a phone yeah, call. You want to see them? <laughs> but I like FaceTiming yeah. them because sometimes, and some people, it kind of throws them off a little bit just because <laughs> yeah. they're like, hey man, why are you FaceTiming me right now? But... I'm Adam Brenneman. This, 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 this is Next Up. All right, man. Well, appreciate you coming to the Airbnb and yeah, I appreciate Orlando. y'all making the trip, man. This, this is awesome. No, had to, had to come see you in person. Let's man. go. It's better better than being on Zoom. Yeah, so. that's right. That's right. Uh, you made some history last week. Yeah. Se- seven touchdowns sure. on national television, man. Everyone, my Twitter feed was all JRP clips, <laughs> man. How how did, how did it feel? Yeah, uh, it was a ton of fun. A ton, a ton of fun. Especially, I mean, it's it's fun to have success, you know. And so, like, uh, I was telling some some people after the game, it's. Everybody, it looks like John Rice had an awesome game, and, and <laughs> yeah. you know, spotlights on you or whatever. But um, everybody, when everybody around you executes like that, mm. it really makes it easy for you. You know, if a couple of those deep balls I threw, it was like O'Keefe with nobody around him, Kobe, yeah. nobody around yeah. him. You know, and so the offensive line proed it up and, and just give you a bunch of time. It makes it easy. You, know? you, get, you guys had a great game plan. It looked like going oh, into. Yeah. I mean, every it, it's like one of those games where everything you plan for just works. All your shot plays work. Correct. <laughs> Correct. And so it's one of those things like. You always game plan it and, and, you know, look, hey, we want to run this into this look. Yeah. And a lot of times you get in the game and it's, the it's not the look, you know. <laughs> yeah. But uh, it ended up being the look a bunch of times that we yeah. wanted it to be and it, it worked out good for us. Sweet. All right, let's talk through this touchdown you had against Temple. You- All right, so the way this play starts, we motion the guy across, kind of wanting to see – are they going to man this out? Or are they going to zone it out? Right. Mm-hmm. That's the kind of the first assessment of the uh, of the play. Then from there, you're going to go um, – kind of through your checklist. Every play kind of has a little checklist that you go through. Um, so first being, hey, they're going to man it, they're going to zone it. This guy runs across her thinking, okay, maybe they might man this thing here. Um, ended up zoning it out. But my play, my checklist starts with the with the immediate uh, threat of taking me rolling out. So if I'm going to get tackled within taking two steps, yeah. I'm going to shovel this ball to Johnny. Um, to the running back. Yeah, to the running back. And he's going to uh, follow Sam. Um and he's just going to walk in the end zone, right? And so uh, nobody immediately took me, so I'm going to continue to roll out. From this point, we're just doing just a, a, a pick play or a rub play. So you're reading him right there. Correct. Right. That's our guy. Yeah. And so with him being so soft, um, if he would have come up and blitzed, then then it becomes a, all right, this guy's a real threat here. Mm-hmm. Since he's so far back, it's like I can I can beat this guy outside, right? Yeah. I, can, I, can, I can beat this guy all the way out. So then you go to your, your rub play. Um, and so you're just going to have a sit down <clears throat> by our, our, our number two in this sense, mm-hmm. uh, just an out by uh, O'Keefe. And then Kobe is going to try to rub um, O'Keefe's guy that's going to be running across if it's man. And then he's getting to the back pylon, right? Okay. And so they ended up zoning this off pretty well. And uh, so for me, I'm, I'm going through it and it's like, all right, this isn't really what we wanted here. Um, and so my eyes immediately go back in to Steven. Uh, and so, hey, can I fit that ball in, in right, right there? The zone, yeah. yeah. And there was a guy right there. And so then it gets to a point where, all right, we're just going to try to make a play him. here. Yeah. Right. And so um, at that point, it was just, let's just try to beat him out the round, around the outside. Then yeah. there was a guy sitting in between me in the end zone. And then and you, you just do anything you can to get in there. Yeah. And so it um, ended up working out for us, and, and I'm glad it did for sure. It's cool because, like, fans just see that you ran for a touchdown. But, sure. like, really that was a shovel read to then a sprint out. That's and right. you got three routes you read, and That's then right. you just run it in. Yeah, yeah. It's one of those, it's one of those deals that, that you don't really realize how much goes into it. Yeah. Um, it's like me watching basketball. Like, yeah. I have I have no basketball IQ at all. <laughs> yeah. I just see a guy make a three, and it's like, let's go. Yeah, there's a whole play um, there. But there's right. a whole play they're running, yeah. you know. And so, um, but, yeah, there's a lot that goes into it. Um, and when you got coaches like Coach Malzahn and Coach Lindsay that are yeah. that are drawing up plays like that, it's it, it makes it hard on defense. It's really sure. just like an extension of almost the triple option. You know yeah, I mean? like you got an option to shovel, an option to throw, an option to run. Essentially, yeah, that's yeah. exactly right. That's cool, sweet man. Yeah, it was the space game. That's right. Right. So that's right. Tell tell like explain like where that comes from, and then you you wore it. You wore the astronaut suit here <laughs> post game press conference. Uh, so uh, space game originally UCF was built. Uh, for NASA, like the, yeah. the school was uh, instituted for NASA, mm-hmm. and so I'm not, I don't know all of the ins and outs on it. Um, <laughs> but every year they have a space game, and uh, to to kind of I guess remember that or, or, yeah. or play off of that, you know. And um, it, it's a, 
it was my first experience with it, and it's, it was a really cool experience. Everybody's dressed up in like space game outfits, right. aliens and astronauts. <laughs> you see them, and then earlier in the week, uh, there was a video that kind of went viral of uh, Malzahn wearing, wearing the, the space yeah. suit, walking through the. Uh, it was like one of those old sports center commercials, you know, where they like have the mascots oh, in their yeah. office. It kind of reminded me of that a little bit. Um, but yeah, he he did it, and then um, after the game, you know, they pull you the hey, can we go do media? Yeah, sure, whatever. And I walk in, and, there, and there's the space suit laying out on, on like, the couch that's in the waiting room for the media. And I was like, is anyone going to wear that? And they're like, no. So let me put it on. <laughs> so uh, it ended up being, being a funny thing. I, I, so I watched the post-game press conference, and it's funny because you walk in, and you're, like, smiling the whole time. <laughs> I was like, you must have been in a great oh, mood man. after that game. Oh, and you're sure. trying to laugh. Right? <laughs> oh, man. Unbelievable. Because it, it wasn't anything planned that we were going to do it. It yeah. was just like, it's right there. And they were like, I bet you won't put it on. I was like, all right, I'll put it on. And so sure enough, walked out, and of course, it was fun. Did, did you, like, you like the jerseys? Oh, dude, they were unbelievable. Yeah. Unbelievable. And it's one of those things they keep it from everybody. They keep it really hush-hush oh, really? hush until game time, and then they reveal it like two days before or something. But yeah. um, I got to kind of get a sneak peek earlier in the uh, earlier in the week, and, man, they were sweet. The uh, Citronite Blue on there was kind of fire. So cool. <laughs> so fire. fire. I, I've noticed, I feel like UCF is so innovative in, like, the digital media landscape. Oh, and, like. Man. Like with the with the space game stuff, like just how they, I saw they changed the name of the Twitter account. That's so right, like Space U or something. Well, I forget what it was. Yeah. Something. And then like even the stuff with like the QR codes on the back of the jersey. Do you notice that kind of stuff? Yeah, I feel it's, like they're it's advancing the game. Yeah, like it, it's uh, definitely like like pushing the envelope. Like as far yeah. as like next, I guess wave. They say the future of college football. That's what Coach Malzahn really? always yeah. says, and it's kind of a slogan around. But it we're doing new stuff that that other places aren't necessarily doing. You yeah. know, um, and as far as the equipment guys, Brad and Kenny and, and CJ, mm-hmm. to be able to, to flip the script and say, hey, spring game, we're going to go QR codes on the back of their jerseys. So cool. Unbelievable <laughs> that they have the ability to, to yeah. sew it up and get it get the patches on the back of the jerseys to make it happen. Um, but, yeah, I, I, I mean, I think it's very, very um, – obvious that that we're we're kind of pushing the envelope with that like yeah. with the with the decals on the sides of the helmets with the space game changing mm-hmm. it for just a jersey for just a game or or qr codes on the back changing yeah. um the name of the twitter like it, it's all the little things that 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 is kind of changing the game a little bit well after you have a game like last week where you have seven touchdowns do you like do you go on Twitter after the game and notice that you're trending and stuff like that? Like, uh, do you ever do the good old name search on Twitter? Yeah. So, because <laughs> so, there's probably some bad stuff there too. Some correct, too. correct. You'll get in trouble doing that. But it, uh, I'll tell you about it. Ole Miss, I love the, the social media, right? Yeah. Com- coming from high school, like uh, <laughs> yeah. you, you do something and, and, hey, you end up playing really good. It's like, hey, I want to go see what everybody's saying about me on Twitter, what's everybody posting on Instagram and all that. Um, but then I found myself. Uh, after a bad game, like, man, I wonder what they said about me. And yeah, you go through it, it's like, it? geez, man, this is some, <laughs> this is some bad stuff. And so one thing that I've tried to really work on since being here and, and being in the, in the spotlight with it is if I go through and look at it when it's really good, yeah. I know that I'm going to want to when it's really bad. And so I try my best to yeah. stay off of it, um, even if it's good or bad. Now, obviously, I'm going to hop on and, and read a couple good ones or, or read yeah. a couple bad ones after a bad game. But um, it's one of the things that I kind of try to – a little bit keep my distance from because mm-hmm. if I read all of them, sure now you're walking around with a with an airhead thinking that you're yeah. you're somebody that you're not, and then if you read them when they're bad, then you're walking around with somebody else's opinion yeah, about you. You know what I mean? You try to try to keep yourself level headed as much as you can yeah. um, because if you follow Twitter, you'll definitely be riding roller <laughs> coasters. <laughs> you'll definitely be riding That's roller coasters. Is. That's how it is. I, I feel like in like with the way that UCF has been innovative and been the future of college football per se. It's kind of made you, and you have a good personal brand before going to UCF, but you're probably like the most well-known group of five player in the country, like uh, the, best, the best quarterback. And do you think that they have something to do with that? Like they do yeah. a great job on social media, like the videos, they posted the video of you with the, each touchdown. Yeah, yeah you that, saw was that? Really that was really good. Su- I, such that a cool awesome. video. We were just watching that and like, that's a sick video. Like yeah. they, they branded you so well. Like it has to be an asset for your brand. Yeah, those guys, I mean, they, they do an amazing, amazing job. And, and me and Kobe Hudson were talking about it earlier in the week. It's like, our guys that, that work the cameras and, and Connor behind the, the the camera, I mean, like those guys don't miss a moment. Like Crazy. they they, yeah. they catch everything, right? And so um, it really and then they give you the content to say, hey, you can you can push this out there if you want to. Hey, yeah. we'll push it out there and we can collab on the post, whatever. They do a really really good job about brand building everybody. And yeah. and, and myself being the quarterback, you know, you get a lot of spotlight on you. And so they've been um, really really good about, I mean, helping me build my brand. And yeah. it's one of those things that. In this day and time with college football, like mm-hmm. you want to 
have a strong influence or a strong yeah. presence on social media, but then you got to go back to the same deal of, hey, you can't ride the train or, yeah. or the roller coaster of social media in the same sense. So it's one of those things that you're you're kind of uh, checks and balances with a little bit. Yeah. Um, but they they do a really really good job about giving us the content and helping us with that kind of stuff. And it's always like as a starting quarterback, it's something that your agent's great with too, like not wanting to like be too much on social media when you're in the middle of game week. Yeah, 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 yeah that's <laughs> right. the appearance you're just tweeting the sure, whole time. Sure, know? sure, It's like a balance you got to play. That's right. Yeah. That's exactly right. Um, I, I wanted to ask about your – how you go about transitioning from football to baseball mode. Yeah. And, like, what that – like, do you feel like when you get back to baseball after, fo- after football season that you're, like, rusty and you like sure. go, to, go in the cage and you can't hit a pitch? <laughs> so, it's, it's one of those things that's, like uh, – with baseball or football, like if, yeah. if you don't use it, you lose it kind of deal. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. And so in high school, everybody does it. You know, everybody plays football, basketball, baseball, mm-hmm. soccer. Everybody, everybody does everything that they can, yeah. you know. Um, but when you get to college, it's the same thing, but you're just doing it with athletes that are Thank a whole you. lot better, right? <laughs> like they're, they're, they're just – they're generational athletes, next, next level athletes, you know. And so um, when I go over to baseball uh, in the spring – I've got to realize that I'm competing with guys and competing with guys that uh, have been doing this a, a full year now. And yeah. it's not like they're bad baseball players. They're, yeah. they're really good baseball players. And when I come over um, in the summer for football, that these guys have been going all off season, all yeah. off season for football, you know? And so in during football season, what I like to do is, and depending on how healthy you are after games or how mm-hmm. banged up you are, you know, um, depending on how much you can do this, but my off day, I like to go over to the cages and get some swings in in the cage. If it's 10 minutes, it's 10 minutes, mm-hmm. you know, or if it's in there, you're in there for 45 because you feel keep good that muscle day. Memory going. That's right. <laughs> you're just trying to keep the rust off of the swing in a sense. Um, but this past week we did BP on the field and mm-hmm. uh, kind of got to see the ball fly a little bit, you know. And so, of course, you get out there on the field, you're excited for the first time and <laughs> you're swinging, bowing your neck at every pitch, right? And so I had to calm myself down a little bit because I, I was yeah. starting to whiff on a couple of them. But, um, no, yeah, so it, it's just one of those things that, I try to keep the rust off as much as I can during mm-hmm. the season. So when I get to the transitional period, it's yeah. not as drastic. Now there is a definitely a, a transitional period with that. You come over from football, man. I've got to, yeah. I've got to get, I've got to get some work done. And then when you come over from baseball into yeah. football, different stroke throwing it. And so um, there is a definite transitional period that you got to kind of yeah. work through. Does the baseball locker room culture differ than a football locker room culture at all? Uh, yeah, I'd say, I would say so. Um, uh, yeah, I, I it's think just it's just different, you know. Um, football locker room. There's a, there's a ton of guys. There's, there's a lot of fun, huge excitement after wins. Yeah. Um, baseball locker room, a lot more goofy, uh, <laughs> funny guys in there. Um, a lot less guys, but uh, I would definitely say it's different. But I love them both. Does it have to do with like in football? You only get like. 12 games to play and then baseball you have like so many I think, it, like, I think that does play in a factor a little bit because like football you, you game plan all week right yeah. like you're dedicated to this one game for seven days in yeah. a row um, whereas baseball it's like you play and then we're, we're playing tomorrow so it's one yeah. of those things that you can't be dragging in the mud if you have bad games at baseball mm-hmm. because it's going to it's going to reflect into the next game and so yeah. um yeah different but but I love them both what what who's the baseball player you you model your baseball game or your swing after <sighs> so there's a lot of guys that are just unbelievable right now mm-hmm. you know and and um growing up I didn't watch a whole lot of TV and so I didn't watch a whole lot of baseball or a whole lot yeah. of football just because I was always outside playing in the street, outside the playing wiffle ball, right? right? <laughs> yeah. You're doing, doing stupid stuff as a kid, you know? Yeah. Um, but nowadays with social media, you can really have access to a lot of these guys. Like, I'm a, I'm a visual guy. I'm a visual mm-hmm. learner. So when you can have video of these guys swings it helps yeah, you a lot study. to help you model you in, in mm-hmm. the same sense and so you take a little bit from everybody a little bit from mike trout a little bit from aaron judge why he's so successful right now you look on tiktok and there's a guy explaining a swing and so you take a little bit from that <laughs> yeah. too and so kind of mixing it all together into, into what works for you uh i wanted to ask you about the bounce house and what that just yeah. like what the culture what not the culture the environment's like yeah i, I mean the place was rocking uh unbelievable right yeah. it, it's i'm, I'm gonna be honest coming I, I was ever. I've heard so much about the bounce house, like yeah. before I played a game in it, and mm. I'm like, and you look around, it's like, man, there's just no way that this place can get to rocking like like <laughs> yeah. people say that it does. Yeah. But you get out there, and it's like, you can you can 
visibly see the effect that they have on the game. It's yeah. unbelievable how, how loud that place can get um, when we're on defense and it makes it hard for quarterbacks to make checks and makes it the communication hard for, yeah. for everybody. You know, and then when we're, uh, when we're on offense and we make a big play, you look around, it's like, man, this place is rocking. Yeah. Like, this is unbelievable. It's got a sweet feeling. <laughs> and then before the game, this is really cool. So before the game, they play a song. Um, it's like, oh, 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 oh. Mm, yeah. And then – the locker room doors just start rattling. <laughs> and it's like, this is unbelievable. This it's place like, is electric. And then you literally run out. Shaking. Oh, yeah. literally shaking the whole place. <laughs> and so it's like, man, let's go. This is some this is some That's next sweet. level stuff here. I'm gonna just come to a game this Dude, fall. yeah, you need to come in, in the locker room and watch those doors <laughs> rattle. It'll it'll get your blood pumping for sure. What was your first impression of Isaiah Bowser? Uh stud. Uh stud of a dude. Met him um on my official visit. Um I uh, and and just a, a great guy. That was mm-hmm. the the first impression of Bowser was man. This dude's a, this dude's a really yeah. really really good dude. Um, but then you get to watch him in in spring ball, and then you get to watch him um in spring scrimmages, and then yeah. you get to watch him in a game. And it's like man, this dude special. This dude's yeah. next level here. Yeah. He's 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 got what it takes. Yeah. Um, what do you, for the rest of the season? What's kind of your one or two things you're working on? You think the team needs to work on to sure. stay at this level of success? Yeah, um, it's Coach Malzahn talks about it all the time, and he, he Coach Malzahn always talks with his hands, right? Yeah, and he so does. he's very, very audible with his <laughs> hands, and, and so he always talks about second half of college football season. A lot of teams will get up to a playing mm-hmm. uh, standard, and we'll just stay right there. He says, we need to keep going this way. <laughs> and it's, it's one of those things that everybody kind of giggles at because he's so, he's so animated yeah, yeah. With, his, with what he does with his hands. But it's, I think that's exactly right. Yeah. A lot of teams will get to a, a plateau in a sense. It's like, hey, man, this is, we're, we're doing good. Yeah. Um, or, hey, we're not having as much success as we want to. And they just kind of flatten out. But I think if you can build from week to week, whether it's a good game or a bad game, if you can mm-hmm. say, hey, let's find a way to get better because of this or find a way, hey, when this situation arises, we got to do this better. Um, I think that's when you you get to go in this direction, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah. And, um, yeah, and I think that's what we got to do. Game to game, you got to focus on little things or big things that you can build upon to keep getting your team better. Take me through your weekly preparation schedule. Sure. What are you watching each week and on fil- or each day on film? Yeah, so – off day is early in the week. Mm-hmm. So we have a game, then we have Sunday, and we break down the game, right? Yeah. Whatever, good, bad, ugly, we break it down, boom, and then you put it to rest. Mm-hmm. 24-hour rule, after that's it, we're done, right? Mm-hmm. So then the next day is off day. And so in that, you're getting a lot of treatment. Um, got treatment this morning, uh, get some lunch, grab lunch, whatever. Um, then I'm kind of skimming through base downs. Like what, what, yeah. what does this team normally do? Um, basic down and distance, um, first and 10, what are their main blitzes, mm-hmm. right? Just the, the main overview well, of what you're going to get. Based down first and 10, second and seven or less? Sure, you know that's going? right, yeah. yeah. And so just getting a, a main little skim through, yeah. right? Then Tuesday rolls around, and then I get the coaches breakdown of their base downs. And so yeah. the notes I've taken, I can say, okay, we saw the same thing here. We saw the same thing here. I saw this. What did y'all see? And we can kind yeah. of break it down with each other a little bit more. And mm-hmm. then that's when you really dive into it. Um, and then that's when they're going to present, hey, this is what our game plan is. This is the looks we want to go into when we get yeah. this, right? Um, and so then after Tuesday, you get into third down and red zone. And so mm-hmm. third downs from seven to 10, third downs, uh, five to six, third down three, third down one to two. This is what we like to do. This is what they do. And then you get into third down pressures and their tendencies of what they do. Yeah. And then red zone, of course, everybody mm-hmm. does a little, little yeah. something different, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, and <clears throat> we kind of have realized that um, we're going to get played a little bit differently mm-hmm. um, just because I think of the running ability that I have. Yeah. Uh, I think some teams will, will put a spy or some teams will try yeah. to uh, bring a whole lot of pressure or some teams will just really drop it all back and, and do yeah. something. So you kind of have to look for film of a similar type of quarterback or similar type mm-hmm. of personnel, you know, and yeah. um, and that's helped us a bunch too. Um, but then after that, you're doing a quick review, you're walking through, and then you're just making those game time Ready. Yeah, sharpening up the, the tools and, and going into the game. What 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 are you guys seeing the most with your ability? Is it like one with a spy you're seeing a lot of? Or? So early on, it was just straight zero. Like yeah. it was like, hey, let's let's pressure this dude mm. and make him throw the rock, right? Like let's 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 bring it all at him. And for the most part, that's what we've seen the most. 
Um, now we've gotten into it a little bit more. We're um, doing some games up front, trying to mm-hmm. keep me in the pocket, um, containing it, and yeah. trying to contain a little bit more. But um, yeah, every team does a little something different. But yeah. for the most part, early on this season, it has been just cover zero. Let's just pressure pressure this dude. That, that's got to be exciting as a quarterback when you get zero. Absolutely, like, Absolutely. You especially when you got receivers on the outside. Especially when yeah. you got guys like Go Javon and Kobe yeah. and, and O'Keefe and yeah. and Gamble at tight end and Alec at tight end like that. Man, yeah. Just we'll take the one on one any day. No you doubt. Know? No <laughs> doubt. We'll take the one on ones. I want to play a little uh, top three game. Okay. Okay. So you All right. Give me your top three here. Sure. Top three stadiums you've played in, other than the bounce house. Okay. Uh, I, I got to say the vault from Ole Miss just because yeah, I was there, right? <laughs> Love that place. That have have emotional connection to that uh-huh. place, right? Um, Tennessee game, uh, when we went to Tennessee, they did the checkerboard and, and it was That's Kiffin's so cool. return <laughs> to it. And it was like, that was that was That's an so unbelievable cool. atmosphere. They started throwing stuff at it. Yeah. Unbelievable, right? That was <laughs> unreal. Um, and then after that, uh, I'm probably going to say uh, Tuscaloosa. I got my first start against Alabama in college, and that was a really, really cool moment for me because, I mean, like, yeah. it's the first time starting in college football, and you're going to do it in Alabama, right? <laughs> yeah. and so uh, I think that was probably it. How would that first start go? Uh, we lost, which yeah. sucks, you know, but um, it was kind of my, my first little taste. Like, all right, this is this is what – this is college <laughs> football here, you know what I mean? Playing an NFL defense. That's right. That's right. Uh, top three NFL quarterbacks. Uh, I think it's silly if you don't name Aaron Rodgers and Tom Brady, right? Those two guys are unbelievable. Um, but personally, I like the guys that, that play with my similar kind of play style. Mm -hmm. Um, so, uh, it's between Lamar Jackson and, and, and Kyler Murray for me. Those are two, two of the, I think most electric guys to watch, you know? Um, and just because Kyler Murray played baseball too, and I can kind of relate (laughs) to him a little bit. I'm going to pick, I'm going to pick Kyler. I love it. That's a good one, man. That's a good one. Yeah. Um, Top three college quarterbacks other than you. Okay. This is a tough one now because I know a lot of them. Yeah. So I can, I can either make a lot if of friends or a lot out, of enemies. We can at some no, point. No, no, no. We're good. We're good. <laughs> um, let's see. Top three in college. You, you can just give a list of a bunch if you sure, want to. Sure. Yeah. Um, love Will Rogers at yeah. Mississippi State. He's a stud. Stud of a dude and unbelievable arm on the kid. Um, mm-hmm. Will Levis. And yeah. he's fun to watch, man. He's just a, a huge, huge athlete that can can do a lot of different yeah. things. You know? We were with him last week in Kentucky. Really? Yeah. yeah, yeah he's I a asked stud. him these same, these same top threes. He's it's funny stud. to see the answer. He's a stud. Um, let's see who else. Um, man, I gotta see here. A lot of the guys at the Manning Pass Academy, I, I like watching just because you know you got to you, yeah. you got to meet them and, and all those things. Um, but who's the who's the guy for? Uh, Texas that got hurt. Quinn Ewers. Yeah, yeah. He's been playing unbelievable yeah. too. Hooker at Tennessee. Yeah, yeah. that's right. Yeah. Um, like watching Spence the Rattler just because yeah. you got to meet the guy. He's a really good dude too. Um, I like Luke Altmeyer at Ole Miss and Jackson Dart. They're both really, really good dudes. Really uh, can play ball too. Jackson's there. a beast. Yeah, he's, he's got been, an arm, he's been man. doing really good. <laughs> he's been doing really good. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I th- I'd say those are, those are a couple guys I like watching. Love it. Love it. What are your. Uh, Top three songs on your on your phone pregame. Man, that's tough. <sighs> you strike me as someone who listens to like some like classical music okay. or something. No, <laughs> no way, no way. So, my, what I really like listening to is country music, okay. and then when yeah. game time rolls around, I like rap music. Gotcha. Right, okay. and so I have this this. You do it all, man. Oh, <laughs> sure. And so in in I, I listen to Spotify, right, uh-huh. and and so I've had this yeah. this this uh, playlist like uh, since late middle school, early, <laughs> early high school. So I've got some major throwbacks on there. Like some, some, you hit shuffle and you don't know what you're going to get. So uh-huh. I've just kind of been accumulating this playlist for a long, long time. Um, I, I like, uh, old young thug just because I listened to it in, in like middle school and high school. Our video guys are loving this. Right now, <laughs> um, let's see who else do I like a lot of, um, man, there's just, a Dolph, uh, yeah, I like I like <laughs> Dolph too. Um, uh, let's see, ah, man, I got a bunch of stuff on there. I, I like Drake too. Drake mm-hmm. will get, gets gets me in the right mindset, and so I'd say those are probably my top three going I into it. it. <laughs> I, I saw a uh, a video of you playing piano and singing. Sure, I didn't know that you you, you left that out on our last interview. You <laughs> sure. also you're also a musician. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so I started playing piano in the second grade. Mm-hmm. That's when I started like classical piano lessons yeah. right and so uh my my parents said hey y'all can do whatever you want you can play soccer mm-hmm. anything 
baseball, football, basketball. You can do whatever you want and you can enjoy right now. Yeah. But you're also going to do something that you can enjoy later in life. That's cool. And so, which was for us, it was the piano because my grandmother played piano and she's unbelievable at it. She can, she's a savage on the keys. That's, that's awesome. what, that's what yeah. we said because yeah. she's, she can absolutely play it. And so we all started. I have two siblings. I have an older sister, myself, and then I have a younger sister. Mm-hmm. We all started in second grade and we took lessons once a week from a teacher. And then uh, the other days of the week, we would ride the bus home to Grand's house. We would do homework, and then Grand would Play. grab us by the ear, and we'd get on the <laughs> piano and, and practice the piano. And so I did that for from second grade until probably eighth or ninth grade, you mm-hmm. know. And, and uh, there, there's a competitive thing to it because, like, you, you practice a piece or whatever, and then you go compete um, at an MMTA, I think, MMTA event, um, mm-hmm. and you compete for the, the best in the state. I think at one at one point I was I was – Place pretty high, maybe like fourth grade. I'll yeah. say fourth grade. I was running it back then. <laughs> <Sweet>. <laughs> but uh, no. Uh, but then, yeah, after that, I started hearing stuff on the radio, like country music and stuff, and I could figure out that if I can just look up the chords, I can just play, play it yeah. on, the, on, the, on the piano and kind of. And so once I started doing that, my, my mind kind of shifted from the classical music to Luke Holmes, yeah. Riley Green, uh, Morgan Wallen, those guys that, that I like Sweet. hear on the radio, then I, maybe, I can, maybe I can replicate that on the piano a little bit. Is there anything you don't do? Uh, <laughs> it's unbelievable. We actually have a, we have a piano back there. You want to go if you want to play it? Let's rip it. Let's rip it. <laughs> Get something doing. What uh, top three apps on your phone that you use the most? <sighs> that I use the most? I Snapchat a ton. Mm-hmm. Text message, of course. Yeah. Really big uh, social butterfly. <laughs> really, really <laughs> like to talk to people, whether it's, it's my girlfriend, my buddy's back home. Uh-huh. Um, and then FaceTime. I'm a big FaceTimer. Uh, a, a lot of the times, older people, they just want a, a phone yeah, call. You want to see them? <laughs> but I like FaceTiming yeah. because sometimes, and some people, it kind of throws them off a little bit just because <laughs> yeah. they're like, hey, man, why are you FaceTiming me right now? But um, I'm a big FaceTime guy. I love it. I love it. That's such a Gen Z answer. That's you know, exactly like right. Snapchat, FaceTime. Exactly right. <laughs> uh, I, I wanted to ask you, so I did an interview with Kenny Pickett a few months ago. Yeah. And he gave told me what was the most challenging NFL draft question he got in this combine okay. question. I'm going to ask it to you. Okay. Right All right. All right. So... He was asked by a team. I don't know. He didn't say which one. You're on a bus. Okay. This is hypothetical. Hypothetical. Okay. Yeah. All right. And they want to see how you answer it, I guess. Sure. You're on a bus and the bus is going downhill. Loses your brakes. You don't know how to stop the bus. Okay. Where do you want to be sitting on the bus when that's happening? Well, is it just me on the bus? It's. Uh, is it a bus uh, full of women a, and it's, children? It's, it's what a, are we talking about? It's a bus full of people. Okay. All right. Uh, when the bus stops, where do I want to be sitting? Just as it's going downhill with no brakes, man, there's like no one knows what to do. Where do you want to be on the bus? I'm gonna be driving the bus, and and figuring out a way to to <laughs> this is, let's stop answer. this deal. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, That's the right answer. By the good. Way. Let's he go. Said, let's go. Kenny said he answered it by saying in the back. When no, <laughs> dang it! <laughs> that was what I, I was thinking. The back, like you want to be like, all right, how away do you from how do you survive sure. away from impact? And they're like, no, they want they want you to say that you're you, know, you want to drive. So the bus. I nailed that. One. So you nailed it. Let's go. <laughs> yeah. That's a true leadership answer. Let's go. I love it. I love it. Um, what's the most unusual thing you do before a game? Unusual thing that I do before a game. Um, let's see. I, I have a routine, right? So I think everybody, I think we're, we're creatures of routine, yeah. right? Um, so we're going to get there, especially a home game. We're going to get there. We do the night walk. We come out. I change shirts out of a jacket because it's mm. hot in Florida. And we go out to the 50-yard line and we say a prayer as a team. Yeah. Then after that, Coach Malzahn, Coach Lindsay, and the quarterbacks, we're going to walk through plays that we have landmarked like, hey, if we're right here, this is what we want to do. If uh, we're right here. This if, we get to the, if we get to the left hash on the 40. Left hash 45, yeah. this is what we're running. Yeah. If we go right hash 30, this is yeah. what we got. Right. So a couple of landmarks we walk through. Then after that, I'm going to go in. I'm going to get uh, essentially ready for the game. So I mean, you're mm-hmm. going to get taped. You're going to get um, – you get your, your pads and your girdles. You're going to get your rib cage on that you're going to yeah. wear, you know, and then at, we're going to, I'm going to go out and just get a feel for the football, right? Yeah. Just, just do some stuff to get you loose and, and get the blood going. Um, and then after that, we're going to go in. Uh, then you, you strap it on, right? Boom, pads, whatever. Eye black in the mirror, you know, all that yeah. good stuff. And then uh, after that, uh, it's, it's, it's go time. You, you're running out of the tunnel. You're, you're getting warm real quick. Save Same a prayer stop. in the end zone. Yeah. Let's go. You know what I mean? So. Um, that's the, the routine that I kind of go through. Nothing really crazy, uh, different yeah. that I do before a game. 
Uh, but yeah, that's probably. Do you get like super nervous, or are you like a? Are you a pretty low key? I'm not. I'm not. Like a, my brother played quarterback. He used to throw up before the game. No so way. He was so nervous. I had I had a couple buddies that used to do that back <laughs> in the day. Um, but no, I'm I'm not really a big nervous guy. You know, I'm one of those yeah. that's like, hey, the hay's in the barn. Let's go play ball. Yeah. You know prepared. what I mean? Yeah, yeah, I'm prepared. I'm ready to go. And um, but I will get excited. I'll get juiced up running out of the tunnel, man. Let's go. Yeah. First drive we score, I'm fired up. You know. I love it. Um, but for me, it's one of those things that <clears throat> it's weird to say as a quarterback. Mm-hmm. Uh, you, you, one of those first plays, you know, you're excited, you're ready to go. Um, what, what's the first play I want to run? I like getting tackled. Boom. Yeah. You get tackled, it kind of snaps <laughs> you back to reality. Hey, man, we're just playing football again, you know. Yeah. And so it's weird to say as a quarterback because you obviously don't want to get the quarterback yeah. hit. But for me, once you, once you get hit one good time, it's like, okay, let's go. This yeah. is just football. What, what's, uh, what's one thing the fans do that gets you the most fired up on the field? Is it like when you can hear them, when the defense is on the field and you hear them rocking yeah. on third down? Yeah. Or is it on offense? So third downs, man, they get going. And then yeah. when they play that the song over the loudspeaker and everybody starts jumping and like you look around and the stadium's shaking, it's yeah, like, man, it. this is some next level <laughs> stuff here. I love it. After a bad series on offense, are you – a calm guy? Or are you talking to the coaching staff? Or are you throwing iPads on the sideline? Like, what, what, <laughs> what, what are you doing after a bat? You go three and out, and you're like, "Wow, that didn't work at all." What are so, you doing? Yeah, you kind of assess what happened, right? So you're you're coming to the sideline, and and then you're taking it all in from Malzahn, from a coach, from anybody else. You're you go to the phone, from- <laughs> man. What are you thinking? I don't know, coach. Blah blah blah. <laughs> all right. Then after that, once you once you get ripped a good little piece, <laughs> then you then you they start saying, "Hey, this is what we're going to do next time," right? Yeah. And so then you kind of assess. You go with your teammates. I, I usually start with the wide receivers, then go tight ends, running backs, mm-hmm. down to the O-linemen. And so I kind of assess, hey, this is what kind of happened in that drive. This is what we need you to do, or this is what I'm going to do, and this is what we're looking to do the next drive we get out there. Mm-hmm. And so you kind of – kind of a process. You go, you get yeah. ripped, boom, got it. Yeah, take it. Yeah. Get some water. Now we're getting on Refocus. the phone. This is what we're going to do, yeah. right? And so that's what we usually do. Do you know anything about the spirit splash? Uh, so – in the in the facility, there's a wall that right. has the spirit splash on it, and and one week I was like, guys, what is this? I'm like, what what is the spirit splash? And somebody explained it to me. Um, actually, Alex Ward, the long snapper, he's been here for like 45 years or something like that, <laughs> something crazy. Shout out my guy, but uh, but he explained to me like it's it's unbelievable that it, people get into it big time. Um, and somebody said that they you throw out rubber ducks, and I guess they're individualized for the year, yeah. you know, and. Uh, Apparently, like if you get one, you've got some, you've got something in your hands there because <laughs> people they want them on their desk, they want them, uh, they want them on their bookshelf in their house, you know. Um, and somebody looked one up on eBay and it was going for like some stupid amount of money. So for does a everyone duck. go like jump in and try to? Is that what happens? Like, uh, now I haven't experienced them? it yet, but I I think they go like three, two, one. And everybody just just goes into this fountain like crazy and so it's one of the things that this like all right i've got to see this i've got to yeah, check this yeah. off my bucket need to go jump in that's <laughs> right that's right i'm gonna have to take a splash myself yeah. but uh yeah it's something i'm looking forward to i love it i love it well i appreciate it man this was fun heck yeah it yeah. was Thanks i'm glad you came man this yeah. is awesome